Here's today's first word, daily devotion. August the 19th, and we open a very exciting reading in our uh, first word, daily devotion. We're at Job, and let's look at Job. There was a man in the land of Uz whose name was Job, and that man was blameless and upright, one who feared God and turned away from evil. Now, Job means persecuted one. And in the Hebrew Bible, Job comes in the wisdom section, or we should say in the section of the writings. Do you remember that uh, three uh, divisions of the Hebrew Bible? The uh, Torah, the uh, Nabaim, and the Ketavim. That is the law, the prophets, and the writing, or the Tanakh. Of course, the writings, the Ketavim, here is Job sitting for us in the writings. Now, what does that mean? This is the wisdom section. And Job, of course, means the persecuted one. And so Job is presented as the man of wisdom. He is presented um, as, as a wise man. And of course, that wisdom is tested. And wisdom is always tested for it to be wisdom. He possessed 7,000 sheep, 3,000 camels. I guess I should go back to verse 2. Uh, There were born to him seven sons, three daughters, 7,000 sheep, 3,000 camels, 500 yoke of oxen, 500 female donkeys, very many servants. And here's the point. So this man was the greatest of all the people of the East. And of course, he uh, worshiped the Lord on a daily basis. It may be, he said, that my children have sinned and cursed God in their hearts. Thus Job, at verse 5, offered to the Lord or did this, continually. Now here comes the plot at verse 6. There was a day when the sons of God came to present themselves before the Lord and Satan, which by the way we have a little footnote down there, Hebrew, the accuser or the adversary, so throughout chapters 1 through 2. So whenever we see the name written, we understand that that word means accuser or adversary. Adversary, And he says, have you considered, or he says um, from And the Lord said to Satan, Have you considered my servant Job? There's none like him on the earth, a blameless and upright man who fears God and turns away from evil. Then Satan, the accuser, answered the Lord and said, Does Job fear God for no reason? Have you not put a hedge around him and his house and what he has on every side? You have blessed the work of his hands and his possessions, increased the land. But stretch out your hand and touch what he has, and he will curse you to your face. And the Lord said to the accuser, Behold, all that he has in your hand, only against him, do not stretch out your hand. And notice how specific that is. Satan says, You have a hedge of protection around Job and all of his possessions. That's the reason that he continues to serve you. Take those things away, and Job will curse you. But notice, God does not take the hedge of protection around Job. And go ahead and give you a little bit of look to the end. We're going to see what Job lost restored double unto him. Yes, even his children. But I'll have to wait and get there, uh, get to that point when we make it to the very end of Job. So just stay tuned. And I hope that point excites you. Maybe brings a question into your mind. What do you mean he restored even his children? Well, we'll get there. And I, I want to say, well, I'll go ahead. It's the, it's the resurrection. That's what I'm getting at. But just hold on to that. Hold on to that. And God did not remove his hedge of protection. Notice, only against him do not stretch out your hand. Remember who God is. He's a God of steadfast, never-ending, never-failing love. And it is impossible for him to remove his hand from his servant. And that's an important point for us. And of course, all of these things happened. The Sabians came, the fire fell from heaven, the Chaldeans came, and of course, sons and daughters and all that he is eating, or excuse me, they're eating and drinking, and all that he has, he loses uh, most of it. Then Job arose, tore his robe, shaved his head, fell on the ground and worshiped. And he said, and this becomes the theme of the book, naked I came from my mother's womb, Naked shall I return. The Lord gave and the Lord has taken away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. In all this, verse 4 or verse 22, Job did not sin 
or charge God with wrong. Now, this is going to be an exciting book. There's going to be a lot of questions. I can't wait to walk, uh, walk through it with you. But let's turn now to our 2 Corinthians reading. And here we have a taste of Paul's ministry. And here he gets very personal in the way that he details his ministry. But our hope is that as your faith increases, our area of influence among you may be greatly enlarged so that we may preach the gospel in lands beyond you. So here he has this focus. Yes, he's focused on the church. He wants to dig in deep to the church so that what is dug in deep can bear fruit all over the world. Chapter 11, I wish you would bear with me in a little foolishness. Do bear with me, for I feel a divine jealousy for you, since I betrothed you to one husband to present you as a pure virgin to Christ. And then look how he puts his relationship in Old Testament terms. Remember, the Christian faith is a Christian faith according to scriptures. And here Paul is making sure that we understand our history and our place, our Jesus, as a Jesus according to the scriptures. He uses Adam and Eve. He says this, For if someone comes, I am, verse 3, afraid that as the serpent deceived Eve by his cunning, your thoughts will be led astray from a sincere and pure devotion to Christ. And of course, he gets personally into his ministry. He repeats himself at verse 16. I repeat, let no one think me foolish, but even if you do, accept me as a fool so that I too may boast a little. Now, here's his personal resume. Let's read it. Verse 24. Five times I received at the hands of the Jews the forty lashes less one. Three times I was beaten with rods. Once I was stoned. Three times I was shipwrecked. A night and a day I was adrift at sea. On frequent journeys in danger from rivers, danger from robbers, danger from my own people, danger from Gentiles, danger from the city, danger in the wilderness, danger at sea, danger from false brothers, and toll hardship through many and sleepless night and hunger and thirst often without food and cold and exposure and apart from other things there is the daily pressure on me of my anxiety for all the churches and then he says this who is weak and am i not weak who is made to fall and am i not indignant indignant if i must boast i will boast of the things that show my weakness and so he goes on to recount in chapter 12, his own personal experience, and we don't know anything more. We just go ahead. There's a thousand questions that you're going to have as you read this, but um, I can't ease any of your questions. I have no idea. No one knows, and if anyone says they know, they're not telling the truth. What Paul's talking about, and he has this experience that he encounters, it's a personal experience. I do believe that, where he's taken up to the third heaven, and that is the heavenly realities. And so he says this, to keep me from boasting, there was a thorn in the flesh. And here's one of my mother's favorite verses, 1 Corinthians, or 2 Corinthians 12, 9. My grace is sufficient for you, for my power is made perfect in weakness. Therefore, I will boast all the more gladly of my weakness, so that the power of Christ may rest upon me. Now, we've done enough today, so let's close our time at Psalm 45. And let's read verse 6 and 7 and look forward to seeing you tomorrow. Your throne, O God, is forever and ever. The scepter of your kingdom is a scepter of uprightness. You have loved righteousness and hated wickedness. Thank God that through Jesus, he loves us.